everyone, today I'll be going over the career of a strength and conditioning coach. The person I interviewed was Chris from Empire Training Grounds. The job opening I found was at D1 Training as a head strength and conditioning coach. And what I found interesting was that competitive pay is enticing because most of the other job openings I found were only 30000 to 35,000 and this one happened to be in the range of 40,000 to 50,000 which is really really enticing and along with the additional prospect of being able to nurture a multitude of athletes because one of the requirements they had over there was that you have to be able to deal with elite athletes to your average soccer mom just trying to get fit and all the way down to being able to train the elderly to gain a certain a certain skill they may have lost or being able to train children as well, which you're going to have to have a bit of patience for because obviously kids will have shorter attention spans, which not everyone will be ready for. Another thing that I found personally appealing about this job is that it's, for one, not a desk-bound job. Um, being a personal trainer does require you to move around a lot, whether you're training a big class of people or you're going from house to house training individuals. Um, now, on to the interview with Chris Nguyen. Chris Nguyen has a total of 10 years experience as a strength and conditioning coach, and he is currently located in Buena Park Empire Training Grounds. One of the things that I found interesting is when I asked him, what do you enjoy least about your job? Describe one of your worst days at work. And he said, marketing and sales part of coaching and having to go days where he has to specifically only focus on marketing on inside platforms like Instagram or YouTube. And I did end up asking him what the average pay is. And he said, in the private sector, it all depends on you and how you market yourself. It is not surprising to not get paid at all the first year, which I'm not going to lie. I thought that was a bit discouraging. Once you get a following, you can be expected to go up to 30K, which still isn't that much. And even and that's even if you market properly as well. This isn't a career you get into for the money. You got to love it. And then I asked him, any suggestions for others going into this career who are currently in college? And he said, if you're going to go in this career, you're, don't go in this career for the money. Look somewhere else. <laughs> Which, I mean, it's honest. So, And then I asked him, what are the main misconceptions or myths about your field that would you would like others to know are false and why? And he said, opening a gym is not as simple as it sounds. If you don't have a following, a particular niche, or good at sales and marketing, you will most likely not make it. Which I found really interesting because I honestly never thought about how being a personal trainer doesn't just require you to know the knowledge of the human body and biomechanics and, you know, all that stuff that you learn in college. You also have to, like, be able to market yourself as well to people. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, employment of fitness instructors is projected to grow 14% from 2022 to 2032, much faster than the average of all their occupations. And I honestly think this has partially something to do with the fact that Fitness is becoming a much more popular pastime for people, especially amongst the younger generations. Everyone wants to get into like the whole Mr. Olympia aspect. I think that's also partially due to the fact that why it's a bit more lucrative. But I also think it has something to do with the fact that of um, America's growing obesity problem and how more and more people are like wanting to get a hold of of their overall health and live happier lives. And I really think that the, with more people becoming strength and conditioning coaches will lead to a much more healthier America.